Thank you very much. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's nice to catch you because I know you're always in and out of town. Yeah, I've had a busy 12 months, you know, so it's kind of, it actually feels good to be sitting down in one spot for a little bit. Yeah, I'm sure it does. Yeah, it does. So wait, let's start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. You were born in Houston. Yes, yes I was. And then you moved back home? Yes, I, yes, I did. So where did you go to school? Um, I went to school, uh, in my primary school days, I went to school in the east. I grew up in Enugu and then moved to Aweri. Okay. And then in secondary school, I moved to Lagos. And for my university education, I moved to New York and then Washington, D.C. So I've always been moving, funny enough. That sounds like <laughs> And where did you start making music? My music started off from, from poetry. I've always been a poet. Poetry is, is, is so, so interrelated with um, rap music and hip-hop. You know, so by the time I got to the States, I had the poetic, the creative, you know, idea of rap, but I just didn't know how to rap because I felt like you needed an accent to rap. Okay. You know, and I didn't have an accent. Now, what had happened was, after um, being in the States for a certain amount of time, I actually developed an accent. You didn't think you could do it with a Niger accent? I, I just didn't know how to, I, I just, because the funny thing is I didn't even really have a Niger accent per se. So, um, yeah, I picked it up in the States, you know, and ever since then I've been doing my thing. Okay, and I know your first crew was the WFA. Which yeah, made up World Famous Academy, myself, yeah. um, Ike Chuku, his younger brother Uzi. Okay. Yeah. So what did you guys sort of, how did you guys start up? How did you guys come together? Um, I met um, Uzi. Uzi and I were in the same school in New York, SUNY or Westbury uh, uh, University. Mm -hmm. And um, at that point in time, I really, I really wasn't, I didn't, really didn't know how to rap per se, you know, but Uzi was this, you know, Nigerian kid who was Igbo as well. He, you know, he, we shared so many similarities. Mm -hmm. We became friends quickly and he started rapping. We shared the same interest, you know, in hip hop. So he kind of like coached me through it, you know, and um, yeah, that's how, that's how I actually, actually earned the skill, you know, to actually rap. And then eventually, somewhere down the line, I got introduced to Ikechugu. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we decided to form this crew called World Famous Academy, which was mainly um, focused, uh, centered around uh, a sense of brotherhood. Okay. It's kind of like a fraternity, you know, like what pulled us together is a closeness. And so then when did you decide, okay, you know what, let's package this thing up and let's come home? Let's try our music out in the Nigerian market. I kind of sort of didn't actually decide that for myself. It was just something that happened. You know, my, my uh, older cousin, Obiasika, heard some of our music and he reached out to us and, uh, you know, declared his interest in, you know, signing us as artists mm -hmm. on Storm. And of course, we were thrilled at the opportunity to actually yeah. take the music to the next level. I wasn't particularly sure I was, too, I was ready because mm -hmm. I've always been an extremely shy person. I've always been an introvert, you know? I was still, you know, trying to get myself together, you know, to perform in front of a huge number of people. I was just extremely shy. Mm -hmm. You know, my first big show at the Big Brother um, Eviction Party, I was, um, I almost had a heart attack because I didn't know how I was going to perform for that many people. Wow. You know, but after I did that, there was no looking back pretty yeah, much. Yeah, and so yeah. once you got on stage, you felt this is it. Yeah, funny enough. So I never really planned it. It just okay. happened. Did you produce your first um, album with Storm on ground? Well, my first album with Storm, um, it was supported. It was supported by Storm. My okay. first album was supported by Storm. I did majority of the production with um, a producer in Abuja called Ty Mix, okay. who actually produced my my biggest song today, uh, Kenny Big Deal. Right. I produced it with uh, one of his associates, um, VC Perez. Um, I had a song on there with Don Jazzy from Mo Hits. Um, I had a song with my my, my close friend from university, um, Ole, and um, that pretty much puts together like the, the production, you know. Okay. But I had to be really involved because 
I didn't really have anybody who was telling me, okay, record this song or rap this way or whatever. So I had to be really involved from the beats, you know, to, to, to the writing. I don't, nobody writes for me pretty much. And actually, I actually developed the skill to actually write without, you know, pen to paper. So I started writing in my head, you know, so I had to be really hands-on for that project. Mm, take it step by step. Yeah, most okay. definitely. So when you came home, you had a few songs um, sitting on top. Yeah, uh, You Know My P, Sitting On Top, Pull Me Lover. Those are like the, my first early songs. Okay, and then Kenny Big Deal. And then Kenny Big Deal much later. Kenny Big Yeah, that was it. Kenny Big Deal was like crossing the finish line, really. Mm -hmm. It kind of like fast forwarded my career. Right. You know, like by times 10, times 20, yeah, you know. Yeah, that was a big one. Yeah, that did was Did you big expect one. it to do as well as it did? <clears throat> no, I didn't expect it to do as well as it did because <clears throat> when I recorded the song, I had no sense, no imagination of where places like Botswana mm -hmm. or Kenya could even look like. But these are places that I ended up going to off the strength of Kenny Big Deal. Right. So I wasn't even thinking that far. All I knew, I just needed the song that was going to get people dancing. Yeah, so I What Kenny Big Deal did is that opened a whole lot of opportunities and windows for me. So I was able to, you know, de develop a, a, a strong presence in South Africa. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I, have, I have a sizable South African fan base. That's incredible. Yeah, which I'm thankful for. Um, the music penetrated to Botswana, mm -hmm. to um, Kenya, Nairobi, to Tanzania, to Uganda, to Burundi. Wow. You know, to Ghana, you know, and even to Sierra Leone. You know, so the music definitely did travel, you know. Mm -hmm. I got a chance to um, get put on the This Day Bill. Right. Um, they flew us out to the U.S., the U.K., to South Africa. Fantastic. You know, you know, and I've actually gotten like a huge, a great deal of exposure, mm -hmm. you know, with the success of Kenny Big Deal. Yeah, you know? for sure. Yeah. And so now what are you working on? Now I'm working on a follow-up album. Of course. Entitled Super C Season. Okay. And unlike the first album, I'm more experienced as an artist. Mm -hmm. um, when you become popular, you get certain, you know, privileges, you know, as opposed to starting from scratch. Right. The respect is, you know, the respect of calling another artist, reaching out to another artist to work with them, mm -hmm. you know, it's is there as opposed to being a new artist that's the hater right. talking and i don't need to have uh -uh. your boy super c all you want to be successful money money in the car cars in the clothes hey. so ho ho i just want to be hey. i just want to be successful hey. yes, so. i just want to be yes, i just want to be successful I'm just trying to, you know, focus on, you know, putting out good music, mm -hmm. you know, for my fans. Because I, I, I know it's important to keep my fans together. Right. And to also get new fans, you mm -hmm. know. So, it's not rocket science. And I already know what I want to achieve with this album. Yeah, and you got a lot of recognition for the last one. Quite a few awards, Channel O, MTV. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I got tons of recognition. I got awards. I won, I've won the, um, the major awards, you know, that I think any artist any modern day artist, you know, in Africa would want to win. Exactly. You would want to win the, the major awards in your in your country mm -hmm. and the major awards in the continent, which right. is talking about MTV and Channel O, mm -hmm. which I've done. And I've done Sound City and Hip Hop World, you really? know. And I mean, I won other awards outside the music aspect. I won an award from my alumni, from, from my school, my secondary school I went to, um, Atlantic Hall. Okay. You know, they made me an ambassador. Um, they picked like the five um, I think five or ten, you know, uh, individuals in society that the students would look up to the most, okay. the most distinguished, mm -hmm. you know, and I, for me it was a wonderful experience. I wasn't a top five student, you know, That's but to actually emerge beyond the top five students, is, it's something else, you know. Yeah. 
Because what it does, it gives the kid, you know, in class that may not be the smartest kid, you know, hope that, you know, I don't have to be getting the best grades, but it doesn't mean I can't, you know, be, right. you know, I can't be this and that. And recently I got invited by uh, Harvard University to um, deliver a speech, wow. which is um, something I'm going to be debuting in ha Harvard. So I've gotten like tons of doors, you know, mm -hmm. academic perspective, you know, uh, music perspective open, you know. And the CSR initiative. Yeah. Are you gonna give us a little bit of insight into yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's um it's it's based on academics. Okay. It's based on encouraging um the African youth, not just Nigerian youth, to stay in school. Nice. What we see is that in our communities, the people that mostly drop out of school are young males. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to look for ways to get them more, you know, to to, to get them around that. You can be anything you want to be, you know, mm -hmm. but you have to go to school because that's the only way you're gonna be able to make educated decisions for my fans I'm a good representation for them exactly. and for a lot of parents if they wanted their kids to be artists and musicians they would want them to be more like NATO because right. I can go yeah I can go anywhere and talk about anything mm -hmm. I feel like what I've done is broken the mold and I'm like I don't care you know who who whoever you are like I'm educated and I'm an award-winning musician and mm -hmm. I do hip-hop I rap right so what you want to tell me now Exactly. You understand? Yeah. yeah. And you, in between all this, you're still studying. Yeah, I mean, I try my best. It's very hard. You know, I'm studying energy economics just because mm -hmm. that's what I'm interested in. And I, and, I, and I thought it was an appropriate challenge that I wanted to take on. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, taking on the challenge of academics and uh, music at the same time might be a little bit overzealous, but I think it was necessary for me. Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person that likes to push boundaries. You know, behind, behind the scene, there's a lot of chaos, you know trying to meet up with deadlines and you know but get I thank God ceremonies. yeah get to award ceremonies flying 10 hours across you know continent to continent and all that stuff but I, it's the sacrifices we make because we want to create situations or opportunities not for ourselves but the others that are going to come after us right you know wow fantastic it's been really nice talking to you. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm so. sure that we've all learned a lot and we all see the Kinney Big Deal and <laughs> like the rest of the tracks. But, you know, the academic side too is like it's very, say, important. very important. Very important. Very so, important. yeah, very important. we have people listening out, especially the youth. Yeah, I hope, I hope they are listening too. And that they're going to like listen to your words and take them, take them on board. Yeah, they have to. Because I'm going to be in their face for a long time. Yeah, you stay there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.